Hey everyone, so I'm back with another video of cue cards. This is actually my third take on this video, and I'm hoping it is the final take. Um, long story short, my animals like to act up when I'm recording. Not necessarily just be um, loud, um, because I do have my loudest pet with me at this moment, because he likes me the most, so um, having him with me just kind of calms him down and lets him be less noisy. I'm going to let you guys guess what kind of pet I have, but let's just say he's an aviary buddy, and he, unfortunately he is not in game at this moment, um, but you may hear him, he just may, like now, he just um, said hello to me, um, I'm putting on a little um, blanket over me, so as to reduce um, sound from the outside, and uh, keep him warm, so if he makes a little chirp here and there, it shouldn't be loud, um, he should be pretty calm here. In fact, I think he likes to hear me talk because he's even more calm now. So today we're going to just go discuss over... Oh, you're chatty, aren't you? Um, so today we're just going to discuss over tourney and how I got to rank 20 dragon. Um, and hopefully I can get myself in the top 100. This, um, let me see here. Yeah, that um, avatar right there is probably one of the coolest ones that's come out in a while. Um, not to say that the one from last week or the week before was nice. But um, I just I just like how diverse they can be in terms. Usually they're you can see the world one and then that kind of primal dinosaur one and that third one up top. That third one being the most different. Um, and just to show off a bit, uh, I finally made it to top 100 for three weeks in a row. Um, as soon as I made it, I've been making it top 100 for a while, but I couldn't really make climb up the ranks all the way. So now that, um, you know, I've sadly <laughs> spent some real cash on here and uh, just all around grinding. I think grinding is what's helped the most in terms of trading. Like I got cloning recently. and It's been a huge help to this deck. And right now this kind of meta that I've seen for this week is kind of what I call tiny but mighty. So you can see a lot of my cards here have very low energy cost. And the way it thrives is by, um, sorry, my bird gave me a little kiss, is by not only having low energy because this uh, tournament kind of doesn't give you, it's very awkward with energy, um, gives you a minimum of 15. You can top out at 22, but um, for example, adding an energy card, it just really dampers your power, so it's not really worthwhile because you can't even break 15. You know, you're going to need two or three energy cards to do that, and Okay, my bird just kind of freaked out there. Um, if I had a camera, I think this would be a lot more pleasant for you guys as the viewers. But for now, it's going to be a bit of a distraction. I apologize for that. Um, so where was I? So yeah, um, a lot of these decks, um, very few, have high power, high energy. And again, the way they really output power is um, a lot of these give buffs to the lower energy cards. I mean, there is a rainbow factor to this. It is a rainbow deck, so Heimdall also helps out, and as well as Eros. Um, but they can easily, if this wasn't a rainbow deck, this could easily swap out for a lot better rainbows. And this little guy right here, he's probably one of the biggest heavy hitters, but he still gets buffed because his base energy is zero. So even though he gets 60 plus after I use him the first time, the first time I use him, he could have already 60. And the next time it comes around, he's already got double. Um, and you can just kind of read these cards and see what I mean. And then the, um, the, and so the buffs that really help out is the Testudo Formation, Door to Hell, and Heimdall. Um, Jade Emperor can be useful, but he is kind of um, weak to start off with. But I probably use him mid-game or late-game, and that's how I just kind of smooth it all out. So the... the I'll show you guys here, but the um, best kind of hand I can have and the best thing I try to work around is I try to do one round just using one uh, using door to hell. Door to hell, I have no option. So if I ideally, I would want door to hell first. And then next round, uh, or if I get um, Testudo Formation in the same round, I'll hold off on using him so um, that I don't, you know, I don't buff my cards too much, um, especially if I'm already winning. So I'll use him, I'll hold on to him next round and use it. And then 
ideally um he's not the biggest uh buff but i'll like use heimdall in one round testudo formation in the other and door to hell and i'll and i'll hold on to these cards to make sure that happens and i think that is how i've been winning a lot of these um battles so we're gonna go ahead and just kind of kind of put my gonna put gonna put to practice what i said um so yeah, I put a little blanket over me so that my parrot could get warm. Bless you. And he is now just on, excuse me, he now, he's just on top of it now. Yeah. And he's still cold. Like, it's kind of cold where I'm at right now. I don't know if that's too loud, but it's too loud for me. So yeah, he's a little quirky guy. Um, if I get one of these straight away, obviously I want to use it because I don't know when the others are going to swing by. Um, there are some cards that I want to use like first right away. Um, so it looks like the deck in front of me is going to just double down on Paleo. And I, I do have, I started with the Paleo deck on this week's tournament. It's not bad. Um, where it struggles with, for you're going to see here, is energy cost. If I had inflammatory cards, it would be really bad for him right now but the power is always dangerous so um, i'm gonna hold on to door to hell actually no i'm not and since i'm losing mosquito will be played i think that was my dog i know i mentioned it's cold outside but he but there is sun, so typically she likes to be outside, even when it's a little colder. Um, my parrot is a parrot, so it cannot handle the cold nowhere near the same. Oh, I really don't want to start this video, but I may have to go for my dog. Yeah, I'm going to have to go for him. Hi, hi, Draco. His name is Draco. You chatty? Yeah? See if I can win. Again, this deck is really struggling with energy. I don't know why it didn't place down a third card. It had more than enough energy to. Um, so I'm not actually too worried about this deck anymore because it seems that they haven't found a good balance. Um, I'll show you guys my um, paleontology deck for this week. Um, it has only one card from another. I think it has one history card. And the reason for it is because, ironically, it um, lowers their the dinosaurs by two. I forgot what's the name of the card, but... I mean, I have K-Extinction. I don't have Bunyip, which is a mythic um, Bunyip. I think it subtracts two off all your Paleo. Um, up to three or four, depending if you're losing the round. Um, so, see, right here I have Test Do the Formation. And I'm not going to use it this round. Um, it's not worth it just for one round. Um, I Do I have energy problems with when I place this do though? Depending on the hand I have. Sometimes I can play a full round using all three, but not always. And um, you see how I have Jade Emperor there? It's a good thing. He's usually, I hold on to him. I know he buffs my card, but only if I win. And so it's kind of hard to win with Jade Emperor. Oof, but this is not my ideal situation here. I don't want to use Heimdall. Obviously, I really don't want to use Testu, though. So I think I'm going to have to go back against what I just said and place Jade Emperor. And hopefully I win. Nope. I'm not quite sure what he placed down earlier, but it does look like he lowered the cost of his dinosaur cards. Alright, yep. Draco Rex. Wow. Hey, oh, sorry. <laughs> I turned around to my bird, Draco, and be like, hey, look, it's you. And he kind of got mad. I turned too fast. Okay, so here I definitely want to win. So I'm going to place down Testudo. though. But this is where I'm going to make a controversial move for myself and place down Heimdall. This might be an overkill. And I'm actually, no, I know I'm going to see Door to Hell this round so I'm not gonna do that and the reason why I know that 
is because if you apply other tactics such as counting cards um i'm not i'm no genius uh but counting cards is a skill in my opinion see there it is door to hell um and it's in this game particularly um cue cards you only have 18 cards in your deck so you just kind of have to map out what's what has been given to you in the first three rounds um, so this, this is, um, door to hell was the very last card, um, in my deck because peaking man, I'm pretty sure was at the very beginning. So I'm glad I didn't play Heimdall. Heimdall will be used at the start of next round, even though he's on fire. I know he's on fire, but the, but the only card I leave on my hand that's on fire is a buff card. And that, that's kind of the double edged sword with door to hell. Cause it subtracts 30 burns 30. And I'm really hoping my dog isn't being picked up. I don't think um, she's barking anymore to be let inside. She probably found a squirrel or something. And you guys can see it is round three with Testudo. And I have not struggled with energy. And you can see how not struggling with energy while putting high output is dangerous for, for, his, for this guy right here. Mosquito is severely weakened. Um, so this first round, I don't expect to um, be winning, which is fine. I think I can turn that around, hopefully, with Heimdall. And so I'm going to use Heimdall, probably, or very, for sure. Hypernova, he's kind of, I didn't really want him to play out in this hand right now. Just because I'd rather use um, Arthru Pluria or Sea Sheep. Definitely you, definitely you. Okay, I can't actually even use Hypernova, so. Guess we'll start here. And for his, <clears throat> excuse me. So again, yeah, I'm not starting off too great. Hopefully um, Heimdall helps me recover. Um, Mosquito is what really kind of held me back in this case. It's not a bad card. It's just, it just got too burnt. Um, I wanted to use Hypernova, but it still got good damage. It's, I know I know that move could have been stupid. Um, yeah, okay, I see, I see. I'm, I might throw away this round, depending on this turn. Yep. I still won, which is okay for the turn, but for the round, I think I'm just give it up. When I give it up, what that looks like is... Um, just throwing away my buff cards. So Flying Cloud is definitely staying. It probably should have, what, 200 power? Yep, 265 now. Cloning. It's 22 till played, so that's nice. Ouch. And what he's really struggling with is he has more than one card to debuff me. I could have maybe even won that. But, I mean, I, I wouldn't have known that. Um, he has Direwolf and the um, Giant Centipede. Sorry, I can't really roll that name off my tongue so fast. Um, but since these base cards are so low, they just get buffed to the moon. That's why they're not affecting me. But I'm affecting him because he's he's got, you know, big scary dinos. And I have little mouse and a sea sheep kind of put it into work. And look at this, look at this damage. I mean, you guys want to see all the buffs. Store to Hell, Flying Cloud, um, Cloning, Jade Emperor. I did win once with him. Peaking Man, wow, okay, Peaking Man on this card. 350, that is absurd. I'm just going to let it play out. 564, let's go. Um, let's put rid of the last. Dinosaur decks are formidable. It's just the way this tournament is laid out does not favor them. Okay. So, Door to Hell is still playable. You're still playable. You're still playable. What about you? 417. Yep. 
Okay. I think he's held on to that Diplo, Dukas. That is not good. But he held on to that thing for power, so... Yep. Ooh, and the Mosquito. See, the Mosquito is going to come in a clutch. I think this is the most output I can do, but let's play around. 308, 312. Uh, I think this is the best one, just because I know he's going to debuff them. Yikes. I thought I was going to win. So he held on to the Diplo and T-Rex. Okay. And we're going to look through the library here. Now I didn't say his deck was bad. I said he had inflation issues. Okay, girl mama. And we're going to just kind of see where things went wrong with that Diplo. So, again here, Jurassic Coast 90. So, he held on to this the whole game because he played, you can only play um, pretty much, if, it, if it's in the first half of the beginning of the deck, you can play the card three times. So, theoretically four if you get it tied. But, I mean, that, uh, that didn't happen. So, he literally stacked it. Mapo, same thing, Mapo should give you, what, 18? Or just 18 or 13, depending if he won the round or not. So he probably won once or twice in this case. Or once, since it says right there. So Mappa Source is there twice. That's the 13 buff until play. And then that's the 5 permanent. Um, Blue Wapleridon. I think that's the um, the uh, sea, deep sea monster. 40, Peking Man. That was me. Barosaurus 98. I'm not sure. That one was the weird one. No, that was Draco. Um, What is that? Barosaurus. Why is it there? Okay, why is it 98? That's crazy. Direwolf. Yep. Yep. See, I try doing this, and I get like freaking half of that oh that's because yeah if you're losing the round this card gains 49 okay this one definitely gave him a few buffs um, this one didn't it says if he was a turn you get 30 so we're just kind of analyzing the decks right now kind of see what what goes against what pretty decently and this is honestly the first dino deck that's beaten me to a pulp. Which is good. Good, good, good. Because at least mine, my deck isn't obsolete. My dinosaur deck I thought was the best it could be. But I don't have Direwolf or... Um, I think I might have Draco Rex. Pulled him recently. Or um, the Hatse Go Ferex. Or T-Rex. I'm so sorry if I butcher some of these. Especially these kind of dinosaurs. I mean, come on. Brachy or Brachip Derigus. Yep. I promise you I love dinosaurs. Maposaurus. Maposaurus. See, that's easy. Easy. Tyrano Titan. See, I can pronounce some dinosaurs. Jurassic Coast. Jurassic Coast is the must fusion if you have a paleo deck. I think he's kind of being kind of crucial to decks now just because of the pretty good buffs. Debuffs, sorry. Cat. Your rare and epic paleontology cards cost minus one. Okay, so this is what he used to deflate. You saw that he was struggling in the beginning, but you see at the end here, he really wasn't at all. Peaking Man is definitely needed for this week's... Uh, tournament just because um it helps um you know it could you can have two cards that are expensive and then he just fills in the last three energy he's some he's pretty crucial um pretty so in terms of like fusion jurassic coast tyranno titan um mm, k 
okay. Extinction could be up there, but the tournament's just not, just doesn't have that much energy. Yep. Now, if you want to go through my deck really fast, where did I really pump out those numbers? 496. 322, 564. Door to Hell was really pushing this round. Flying Cloud was really pushing, plus all the buffs. Um, sea Sheep. I don't know if he's the best water card I could use at this moment. Um, it's got to be relatively low in power again because i know obviously i can do something like if there's manta if this was like a water deck but uh i think water's where i kind of struggle with this guy right here probably one of the most reliable cards um it does gain one energy per turn but i mean it starts off with one and i at, at the worst it'll be at six with test do though and three without it so can't go wrong with that Door to Hell, again, it's a double-edged sword. I kind of have to have it for this sort of deck, but don't know if I'm really going to thrive with it. Um, should have never left the farm. Um, if you want to take a peek at my Paleo deck, Dinos. Um, for a reduced inflation, I have Antony and Cleopatra. History and Paleontology have two minus this round that's not bad but if you look at just this power alone it usually makes me lose that first turn virtual reality i still need that debuff because when he when this card is not around this one comes in clutch subtracts two after it returns for all the cards remaining in hand and um i had to switch out well let's see if i have the draco Nope. Yeah, I would have switched the Draco out probably for this one. But this one just gives out 10 plus to Paleontology till played. And it's not, yeah, it's just not the, there's like a few cards in here. You need to have a few low leveled energy cards no matter what. Um, just because otherwise the energy is too high and all the dinosaurs tend to have, or all the Paleo tend to have really high energy. Um, but they are really powerful. Um, Plyo is really good. Subtracts 2 and adds 15. Um, this one is relatively weak, but it gives plus 18 buff, which is pretty good. And 7 passive. Um, this one is just not so great all around. I mean, you can just kind of, you know, this one is like significantly better in every way. Because it's like getting, if you place 3 cards down, it's like getting... 52 plus a round plus to seven 59 and this one only gives you 30 per turn and this guy gives you 15 but his inner his power alone um, is decent not to mention plus the 15 he might as well have 70 um, or I'm sorry 84 power and for so he can have 84 power for five energy if it gives it all to himself which is good but even if it's spread out it's the same thing in my opinion um this one is obviously great again gives out gives out a 90 92 energy over overall with just its um abilities plecodis um scary looking guy but uh, his only drawback is you don't want to use him at the early turn just because he can give them plus 14 for the round. But it does tend to be pretty clutch. And usually I hold on to him towards the end of the game to buff him just because he already has a decent amount of power with relative low energy. So by the time it's round, uh, the final round, um, he tends to have like 300. Um, others can have more. Like um, you, you saw the guy in the previous match. Um, but I just don't have the setup like he does. Uh, Pleo, uh, he's kind of, he's really good overall, but you really don't want to play him only at the first turn of a round for the 15 bonus. 
and he's just kind of high cost so you kind of have to work your way around him same thing with the maposaurus it's not that this one is better than that one it's rather than having two high energies like this kind of puts you at a disadvantage because you want to play him first for you know the whole, that whole giant buff that we saw but at the same time you know you can't really play these if it's the first turn of the round at the same time raja raja is the only inflation inflationatory card i have pretty good um it's basically inflation for them and none for you uh you this one's a must-have i do have a spare it's a 20 12 play um this one i'll probably switch out for the draco or or the flying guy but um this one and this one oh not sorry and this guy and the T-Rex, wherever he's at, are kind of in the same ball field. I do think he's slightly better um, just because if, whether you're winning or it's the first time of the round, you still get that buff. So it's a little bit safer. It costs more, but it's safer than the T-Rex in my opinion. Um, I don't think we're going to be opening any packs. Eh, I got a good amount of cash. Uh, nothing in store interests me. I don't need the rainbow pack. Too expensive for a limited epic, in my opinion, that I don't need. I might just trade for the Heaven's Gate. Fusion Fridays. Uh, wasted Gems, in my opinion. Quarter Pounder. So, funny enough, I haven't even opened a single Quarter Pounder. And someone offered me the Devil. And I was like, sweet. Arthurian Legends, I don't really need. Again, like I was very generous the first day Arthurian Legends came out. Just got a bunch of um, stuff relative to that. Curious Cuisine, I think I might just need for the burrito. And we're just going to, we're just going to, I'm going everywhere, aren't I? I'm just going to show off here from date received. Let's look what I've been given through Arthurian Legends. This I pulled a long time ago. Really good for early game. And just kind of, it's kind of a Hail Mary, you know, if you really, if it's the last round, you just need the extra power, he's there. This one was given to me. For a tray that was pretty cheap. Oh, excuse me, so Sir Ballin, Sir you man. No, oh, it's got a date received here. Infinite Grand Hotel, pretty good for inflation. Oh, yeah, there it is. I didn't even open a single quarter pounder, so I was like, I think I might pass on the quarter pounder just because I pulled the devil. Um. Same thing with Heimdall. Had really good trading week overall. Um, we were looking for this. I gave up a, a spare mythic, so I don't necessarily think it was worth that much. Maybe I slightly overpaid, um, but I, I mean, I wanted it, and I I wanted to secure it. Mm. What were we looking for? What was I talking about? Just showing off at this point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We we're going to look at um, cuisines here. Mm, it's okay, Arthurian, actually, as well. Cuisine. Put want. So from here, I mean, really, Arthurian Legends just has a lot of good artwork. Camelot, you know? And I think some of these are, are just going to be good trades to hold on to. But Curious Cuisine seen burrito a lot we got a gain 15 and if you want to turn they cost one next turn yeah that's pretty good shawarma avengers reference i don't know what it is but i want to try it tony stark 2012 i think five random cards from either player's hand gain 25 this turn reveal boards before scoring hmm Yep. 
I don't know how people made a lot of deck. Burrito was very playable before. That doesn't look too crazy, but I still want burritos. Okay, well, I think I'm going to leave it at this. That was kind of a lot of very um, analytical for this video, in my opinion. And I don't want to make any any longer just because there's a lot to go back to and just kind of relearn. And we saw really, really good decks today. Two of them, two of them were mine. And the Paleo one is my weakest one. It does an output of 250 uh, to 600 tops but if you saw my deck that I just used I got 300 typically um, after the first round to round um, I've even gotten it to 700 which is can turn the tide of most matches then we saw that paleo deck of the enemy my that was a sight to behold um, definitely if you can set up anything like theirs or mine it's probably what's going to get you to dragon level. So we started 20 and ended up 19. Um, I, I'm going to just uh, continue to play a bit more. And next time we make a video, hopefully you guys see me with the Heaven and Hell avatar. So hope you guys enjoyed. Um, my bird says bye. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.